Hi guys, my name and I welcome you all to the channel. Guys, we all feel great when we reach high up in the mountains after days of trekking or days of biking. But do you know that all these high altitude experiences are attached with great risks. In this video, we will try to understand all these risks and we'll make sure that when we venture in the high altitude next time, our experience still stays very much safe, keeping the adventurous spirit alive. We are going to start this video by having a basic understanding of both altitude and high altitude. Once we understand what altitude and high altitude actually mean, we can actually appreciate or understand what changes happen at high altitude. After understanding those changes, we could definitely understand the need of acclimatization and how not allowing our body to acclimatize well can lead to things like acute mountain sickness. In plain simple words, altitude is the distance above the sea level. We all know that the Earth's gravitational force pulls everything closer to the surface of the Earth. As we go up, the density of the air reduces, which means that as we go higher up, away from the surface of the Earth, as the altitude increases, the pressure actually drops. So more the altitude, lower will be the air pressure. But have you ever thought of this thing that how high is this high altitude? It is normally considered that anything higher than 8,000 feet or 2,400 meters is considered as high altitude. And since very few people actually go to the high altitude, it has become really difficult for the researchers to set a perfect correlation between high altitude and someone's susceptibility to altitude sickness. You cannot relate altitude sickness to your age, to your gender. It varies from person to person. And therefore we say that if you're venturing into the high altitudes, anything which is above 8,000 feet for the very first time in your life, then you need to be cautious. And even if you're going for the second time or the, for the third time, you have to make sure that you're properly acclimatized. But before dwelling or understanding the meaning of acclimatization, we need to understand that what actually happens at high altitudes, what changes at high altitude. We all know that the concentration of oxygen in the surrounding air at the mean sea level is 21%. But as we go higher up in the atmosphere, when we enter into the high altitude, the air still has 21% oxygen in it, but the total number of air molecules has reduced. Because as I told you, we go away from the earth, the gravitational force reduces, the air density reduces, we have less air molecules in totality. For example, at 12,000 feet, that is somewhere around 3,700 meters, you'll have 40% less oxygen molecules per breath. Therefore, if I have to do any activity at high altitude, and if I have to do any activity at the mean sea level, the oxygen demand is the same, but the supply has basically reduced because we've entered something called as the thin air, something addressed as thin air by all the mountaineers. So at high altitude, the availability of oxygen is so low that now my body needs some time to bring some internal changes to get used to this lower oxygen. And guys, this time itself that our body needs is known as the time our body needs to acclimatize. And therefore it is said, if you go too high, too fast, not giving your body enough time to bring these internal changes, what comes back to you is acute mountain sickness. Now let's talk about these changes that our body undergoes so that it could operate normally, even in this reduced oxygen availability scenarios. Guys, the first and the foremost things that you will notice is that as you go to the higher altitude, your depth of respiration increases. You start taking deeper breaths to further oxygenate your body. Second, all the pressure in the pulmonary arteries, it increases so that the blood body can, you know, push more blood into those sections of the lungs, which we weren't using at all at the sea level. Our body starts producing more red blood cells to further oxygenate the body. And by listening to these points, you can obviously tell that this is not something that is going to happen in an hour or two. So you ne our body needs two to three days at one particular altitude to acclimatize. If we fail to do so, then you'll have some symptoms. These symptoms will be, you'll have headache. You'll start feeling dizzy. You will feel like you're not falling here and there. You'll be fatigued. You'll be tired. You'll have no energy left in your body. And above this, one of the most important symptoms is loss of appetite. So you'll not feel like eating anything. Even if you go and sleep, you'll have disturbed sleep. You'll have vomiting sensation. And these all are symptoms of what we call as acute mountain sickness. Until the point when you have only mild symptoms, it is fine. 
no problem because this body is basically signaling you that please don't gain more altitude i need more time to function normally because the oxygen in the surrounding has reduced if the symptoms are mild it is fine but guys if we don't listen to our body and then even if we keep gaining altitude this mild symptoms can turn into something called as acute mountain sickness which can be life threatening so guys this is all i have in this particular video i'll be coming up with more such informative content on the channel in the future if you're liking what you're watching please give this video a thumbs up hit that bell icon so that you get notified every single time i upload a video on creed as thank you for your constant support and i'll see you in another one